Book four, The Woman in the Forest. Thick thunder of the snorting swine, enormous in the gloam, rending among all roots that cling, and the wild horses whinnying with the night's noises when the king, shouldering his harp, went home. With eyes of owl and feet of fox, full of all thoughts he went. He marked the tilt of the pagan camp, the paling of pine, the sentry's tramp, and the one great stolen altar lamp over Guthrum in his tent. By scrub and thorn in Ethan Dune that night the foe had lain, whence ran across the heather gray the old stones of a Roman way, and in the wood not far away the pale road split in twain. He marked the wood and the cloven ways with an old captain's eyes, and he thought how many a time had he sought to see doom he could not see, how ruin had come, and victory, and both were a surprise. Even so had he watched and wandered under ash down from the plains, with Ethelred praying in his tent, till the white hawthorn swung and bent, and Alfred rushed his spears and rent the shield wall of the Danes. Even so had he watched and wondered, knowing neither less nor more, till all his lords lay dying, and axes on axes plying flung him, and drove him flying like a pirate to the shore. Wise had he been before defeat, and wise before success, wise in both hours, and ignorant, knowing neither more nor less. As he went down to the river hut, he knew a nightshade scent. Owls did as evil cherubs rise, with little wings and lantern eyes, as though he sank through the under skies, but down and down he went. As he went down to the river hut, he went as one that fell, seeing the high forest domes and spars dim green or torn with golden scars, as the proud look up at the evil stars in the red heavens of hell. For he must meet by the river hut them he had bidden to arm, Mark from the towers of Italy, and Colan of the sacred tree, and Eldred, who beside the sea held heavily his farm. The roof leaned, gaping to the grass, as a monstrous mushroom lies. Echoing and empty seemed the place, but opened in a little space, a great gray woman with scarred face and strong and humbled eyes. King Alfred was but a meager man, bright-eyed but lean and pale and swordless with his harp and rags, he seemed a beggar, such as lags looking for crusts and ale, and the woman, with a woman's eyes of pity at once and ire, said, when that she had glared a span. There is a cake for any a man, if he will watch the fire. And Alfred, bowing heavily, sat down the fire to stir. And even as the woman pitied him, so did he pity her, saying, O oh, great heart in the night, O oh, best cast forth for worst, Twilight shall come and morning stir, and no kind thing shall come for her. Till God has turned the world over, and all the last are first. And well may God, with a serving folk, cast in his dreadful lot. Is not he too a servant? And is not he for God? For was not God my gardener, and silent like a slave? that opened oaks on the uplands, or thicket in graveyard gave, and was not God my armorer, all patient and unpaid, that sealed my skull as a helmet, and ribs for hauberk made? Did not a great gray servant of all my sires and me build this pavilion of the pines, and herd the fowls, and fill the vines, and labor, and pass, and leave no signs, save mercy and mystery? For God is a great servant, and rose before the day from some primordial slumber torn. But all we living later born sleep on and rise after the morn, and the Lord has gone away. On things half sprung from sleeping, all sleepy suns have shone. They stretch stiff arms, the yawning trees. The beasts blink upon hands and knees. Man is awake and does and sees, but heaven has done and gone. For who shall guess the good riddle, or speak of the holiest, save in faint figures and failing words, who loves yet laughs among the swords, labors and is at rest? But some see God, like Guthrum, crowned with a great beard curled, 
But I see God like a good giant that laboring lifts the world. Wherefore was God in Golgotha, slain as a serf is slain? And hate he had, a prince and peer, and love he had, and made good cheer of them, that like this woman here go powerfully in pain. But in this gray morn of man's life cometh sometime to the mind a little light that leaps and flies like a star blown on the wind, a star of nowhere, a nameless star, a light that spins and swirls and cries that even in hedge and hill, even on earth, it may go ill at last with the evil earls. A dancing sparkle, a doubtful star, on the waste wind whirled and driven, but it seems to sing of a wilder worth, a time discrowned of doom and birth, and the kingdom of the poor on earth come as it is in heaven. But even though such days endure, how shall it profit her? Who shall go groaning to the grave with many a meek and mighty slave, field breaker and fisher on the wave, and woodman and wagoner, bake ye the big world all again a cake with kinder leaven, yet these are sorry evermore, unless there be a little door, a little door in heaven. And as he wept for the woman, he let her business be. And like his royal oath and rash, the good food fell upon the ash and blackened instantly. Screaming, the woman caught a cake, yet burning from the bar, and struck him suddenly on the face, leaving a scarlet scar. King Alfred stood up wordless, a man dead with surprise. And torture stood, and the evil things that are in the childish hearts of kings, an instant in his eyes. And even as he stood and stared, drew round him in the dust those friends creeping from far off farms. Marcus with all his slaves in arms, and the strange spears hung with ancient charms of Colan of the Usk. With one whole farm marching afoot, the trampled road resounds, farm hands and farm beasts blundering by, and jars of meads and stores of rye with Eldred strode above his high and thunder-throated hounds, and gray cattle and silver lowed against the unlifted morn, and straw clung to the spear shafts tall, and a boy went before them all, blowing a ram's horn. As mocking such rude revelry, the din clan of the gale came like a bad king's burial end, with dismal robes that drop and rend, and demon pipes that wail. In long, outlandish garments, torn though of antique worth, with druid beards and druid spears, as a resurrected race appears out of an elder earth. And though the king had called them forth, and knew them for his own, so still each eye stood like a gem, so spectral hung each broidered hem, gray carbon men he fancied them, hewn in an age of stone. And the two wild peoples of the north stood fronting in the gloam, and heard, and knew each in its mind the third great thunder on the wind, the living walls that hedge mankind the walking walls of Rome. Marks were the mixed tribes of the West, of many a hue and strain, girth with rank hair like yellow grass, and the Cornish fisher Gorlias, and Halmer come from his first mass, lately baptized a Dane. But like one man in armor, these hundred trod the field, from Red Arabia to the Tyne, the earth had heard that marching line since the cry on the hill Capitoline and the fall of the golden shield. And the earth shook, and the king stood still under the greenwood bough, and the smoking cake lay at his feet, and the blow was on his brow. Then Alfred laughed out suddenly like thunder in the spring, till shook aloud the lintel beams and the squirrels stirred in dusty dreams, and the startled birds went up in streams for the laughter of the king. And the beasts of the earth and the birds looked down in a wild solemnity on a stranger sight than still for elf, on one man laughing at himself under the greenwood tree. The giant laughter of Christian men that roars through a thousand tales, where greed is an ape, and pride is an ass, and jacks away with his master's lass, and the miser is banged with all his brass, the farmer with all his flails. 
tales that tumble and tales that trick, yet end not all in scorning of kings and clowns in a merry plight, and the clock gone wrong, and the world gone right, that the mummers sing upon Christmas night, and Christmas day in the morning. Now here is a good warrant, cried Alfred, by my sword, for he that is struck for an ill servant should be a kind lord. He that has been a servant knows more than priests and kings, but he that has been an ill servant, he knows all earthly things. Pride flings frail palaces at the sky as a man flings up sand, but the firm feet of humility take hold of heavy land. Pride juggles with her toppling towers, they strike the sun and cease, but the firm feet of humility, they grip the ground like trees. He that hath failed in a little thing hath a sign upon his brow, and the earls of the great army have no such seal to show. The red print on my forehead, small flame for a red star, in the van of the violent marching, then when the sky is torn of the trumpet's ten, and the hands of the happy howling men fling wide the gates of war. This blow that I return not ten times shall I return, on kings and earls of all degree, and armies wide as empires be shall slide as landslips to the sea if the red star burn. One man shall drive a hundred as the dead kings drave, before me rocking hosts be riven, and battering cohorts backward driven, for I am the first king known of heaven that has been struck like a slave. Up on the old white road, brothers, up on the Roman walls, for this is the night of the drawing of swords, and the painted tower of the heathen hordes leans to our hammers, fires, and cords, leans a little and falls. Follow the star that lives and leaps, follow the sword that sings, for we go gathering heathen men, a terrible harvest ten by ten, as the wrath of the last red autumn then when Christ reaps down the kings. Follow a light that leaps and spins, follow the fire unfurled, for riseth up against realm and rod, a thing forgotten, a thing downtrod, the last lost giant, even God is risen against the world. Roaring they went o'er the Roman wall, and roaring up the lane, their torches tossed a ladder of fire. Higher their hymn was heard, and higher, more sweet for hate and for heart's desire, and up in the northern scrub and briar they fell upon the Dane.